We were literally in Vegas yesterday, driving the newest and closest competitor to this 3-liter Supra, the new Nissan Z. That Z is packing 400 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque from a twin-turbo V6. So let's see if the Supra, now entering its third year, can still keep up with the new kid. Obviously for logistical reasons, we don't have the Z actually with us while we film the Supra today. However, seeing as we were just behind the wheel of it yesterday, we've got a pretty fresh perspective to compare the two behind the wheel today. Covering the bases, of course, we have the three liter twin scroll straight six B58 engine from BMW. In this Supra though, Toyota has handled the tuning and brought power to the same 382 horsepower and 368 pound feet of torque as you would get from this engine in something like the M340i. Toyota also borrows the same ZF 8-speed gearbox that you'd find in the BMWs, but the gear ratios are different and so is the programming. This Supra gets an active rear LSD, managing where that power is going and making most efficient use of it. So that works in tandem with the fact that these rear tires are wrapped in Michelin Pilot's Super Sport tires, which are really grippy. And all of that is, again, about efficiency of not wasting torque and getting all of that power to the ground. This thing comes with launch control and basically from the B58 three liter straight six, the ZF8 speed gearbox, the active LSD, the sticky tires, I mean, this thing is super quick. It makes that 382 horsepower feel more like 425. And the reason we're bringing this up is because on paper, this Super makes 382 horsepower, where the Z makes 400. Yes, the Super makes more torque than the Z, but behind the wheel, this Supra feels noticeably quicker and sharper. And this isn't just a firefight in a straight line. No, this is from the ground up, a really competent sports car. You've got the same chassis that underpins BMWs as the Klar architecture, but here it's been revised, stiffened, and rigiditized. You've got strut tower bracing or some bracing under the hood to keep the chassis stiff and allow the suspension to do the things that it's supposed to do. And it holds up really, really well in a corner. You've got great front end bite. The steering loads up really well. I, have exact, I know exactly where the limits of traction are, and I know when I can get on it. I can step it out really predictably with traction off and <laughs> at the end of the day it feels really quick and most importantly it inspires confidence around a corner. Driving this thing around, especially around the track, has me really really excited for 2023 when they stick a manual in this thing. And it's kind of funny, of course, that the Supra's been out for about two years, and just as Nissan was debuting their new Z that comes with a stick, Toyota's like, oh yeah, we've got one of those too. Interesting. Maybe a little bit on purpose, maybe not. I don't know. But here we have something very similar to what you guys saw last year on the channel. It's a Supra with a 3 liter. It's the premium trim, and aesthetically, it's largely the same. You've got Turbulence Gray, which... Generally, I don't really like gray cars, but I think this one looks fantastic. There's a lot of dimension, a lot of shine, uh, and I hope that translates on camera, but it looks fantastic in person. It's a very aggressive front end. Whether you like it or not, we all know that there's a lot of fake ducting and venting, but it looks spectacular. You have this really aggressive black chin splitter up here, a lot of arrow going on in the front, really, really aggressive and simple headlights. These, <laughs> this LED bar, is probably like 13 feet long. It's it's fantastic to look at in your rear view mirror. Um, the headlights themselves, they're like a six pod design and they look fantastic. Of course, around the side here, you have this really long hood, which of course houses the longitudinally mounted B58 engine. That's, you know, of course, derived from BMW and we covered that, but you've got this fake venting here along the hood, 
who cares? It looks cool. Around the side, you've got 19 inch, 10 spoke aluminum forged wheels that'll help bring down that unsprung weight like we talked about in a Z. That's making that, uh, that turn in feel a little bit more sharp, a little bit more dynamic. Another thing that helps with that is the fact that you have Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. These things, I think, are part of the big difference between the Z, the Bridgestone uh, Potenza S007s on that, versus the front end on this, on this with these Pilot Super Sports. This just feels a little bit bitier. Now granted, of course, we got to drive this around the Road America track, and thanks again to them. Uh, we didn't get to drive the Z around the track, so I can't speak definitively to that, but based on my interpretation, this feels a little bit bitier. You've got four piston Brembos up front, and then a whole bunch of bodywork down the side here. Um, carbon fiber, covered, uh, side view mirror, which is great. You still have the wind buffeting issue here. And then you've got this molded in kind of bodywork here. Again, fake venting, but it looks aggressive. And that's the thing that allows for this really, really flared rear hip, which then we get to the rear. And this is probably my favorite angle of the car. There's just so much swooping and dimension and angles and it just looks good. The molded in lip spoiler here is fantastic. You've got your Toyota badge, superscript, GR, completely black diffuser, F1 style, reverse light, and your dual exhaust, which of course goes pop and bang and all that fun stuff. It's a fantastic looking car, at least in my perspective. Sure, you get over some of the fake venting, but it looks cool and it's there for the aftermarket. If you're gonna bring in, you know, turbos, intakes, and all that sort of tunes and stuff like that, it's built to be removed. So you can, they, they thought about the aftermarket when they designed this thing. Um, the thing that I have to talk about here, and the biggest difference uh, between this and the Z is the cargo area. This has allegedly 10.2 cubic feet of storage in the trunk. The Z, I believe, is 9.6. So the Z is technically less. However, when you actually open the trunk here, the entry or the, the little opening is significantly smaller. The Z's is much more conventional, kind of like swoopy arc design. This has a lot of cuts and grooves. It's a lot smaller opening, so it's harder to get stuff in. It's deeper, there's a deeper floor, which is where a lot of that carbo or that cubic feet of cargo space goes, but the trunk space on the Z, I feel, is more usable. But with that, why don't we jump inside? Okay, so jumping on the interior, this is where it's gonna show a lot of its BMW-ness, but I've been in and out of a lot of Toyotas over the last few years, and never once was I like, oh, you know what? This design and these materials are better than a BMW. So. Pretty much all the software, the chimes, the dings, and all of the BMW stuff is here, but just with like kind of a light Toyota reskin. The HUD is very BMW from the colors to the design. The gauge cluster is very nice, but they didn't maximize the complete use of the space. There's like a black box next to it. Uh, I just feel like the Nissan Z, uh, the, the digital cluster on that is a little bit more, it's a lot more customizable. It's bigger, it has better black levels and stuff like that. This one's still good, but the Z I think is just a touch better. Then moving over here, you've got an 8.8 inch screen for your infotainment system. You can touch it, it's touch screen, uh, or you can use the actual iDrive wheel. T typically, I like to use the wheel, uh, but you've got wireless Apple CarPlay, which is fantastic. This screen, again, is a little bit where the technology in this is showing a touch of its age because it's previous gen from BMW, uh, whereas the Nissan is like new and out of the box and running their latest software and it's the new screen and that sort of thing. Uh, from a functionality perspective, it's still very competitive. It's just the way that it's tacked on, not quite integrated. I like the look of the Z a little bit more. But then as we're talking about technology, we talk about the driver assistance suite. You have pretty comparable systems here. Uh, the main difference that I've experienced is that you have a bit of active lane keeping assist uh, in the Super, which is a little bit better than you would get in the Z. Um, ultimately, the design, just sitting in here and being in here, it feels a little bit more cramped uh, than it would be in the Z, but the materials, the, you know, all of the stuff is very BMW, it's very good. The, the red leather is fantastic. It's not completely overdone like in a Civic Type R. I'm sorry that that's my go-to every single time, but it is. Um, the molded plastics are expensive. They're soft touch. The switch gear is all, you know, got a nice weight to it. It's rubberized, metals, aluminums. And there's just, there's a bunch of carbon fiber in your center console to match your wing mirrors, which is just kind of cool. Um, you do have a 12 speaker JBL sound system, which is very Toyota. So, you know, it's fine. It's better than some of the other ones that we've tested here. Uh, and you get kind of the cool, funky, you know, almost, you know, multi-spoke wheel design uh, speaker covers behind you. Ultimately, being in the cabin here, the Z interior just feels a, a slight touch more modern. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, uh, but overall the sense of quality, this, this Supra doesn't miss. Um, and I feel like that's probably a good time to talk about the final thoughts. 
So yes, I know the BMW thing is played out and I know that there are people out there that won't buy the Supra because it's not a bespoke Toyota, but those people are missing out on a really good sports car. As far as this and how it compares to its newest and closest rival, the Z, the Z is a good sports car, but this Supra is just a touch sharper behind the wheel. The B58 engine and the ZF transmission are so crisp and blisteringly quick. In fairness to the Z, we only had time to drive the manual given our production schedule. The Z feels objectively quick, but since we literally drove the Z one day and the Supra the next, we were able to pick up on the subtle differences. Until we get both of these cars around a track and set representative lap times, the Supra still wears the crown. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.